What up? <laughs> I mean, we back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Just wait until y'all. You get a load of the uh, the guest today, the brother of mine. There he is, with them shores. Hey, 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 hey. My brother. What's happening, dude? Nada. How you doing? Man, I'm alive. And what else is there? <laughs> what else is there, man? Yeah. Well, how, how's uh, how's it coming through on your end? You sound fantastic, man. Like, this brings joy to me. Joy. Joy. Good. How do I sound? Perfect. Never per- better. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> you gotta well, have the Street Fighter perfect. Yeah, man. Uh pleasure to be spending uh Saturday afternoon speaking with you. Ladies and gentlemen, to those listening, this is my brother, brother Deedon, motherfucking Donovan. No relation to Ray, Mickey. Bunchy, none of those fucks. No, in fact, I've never even seen the show. He's, How is it? He's a very, hear- de- he's a very decent Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite Donovan. Uh, the show, that, man. the show was, um, it was cool for the first two seasons. I want to say shark jumped. Mm. They ran out of shit. Like, the, the, like they even included Ian McShane. You know Ian McShane's dope from what Deadwood. Yeah, he's great. Things like that. He's fantastic. Same guy and everything. He's just Ian McShane. Um, he couldn't help it. Couldn't save it. No. Like they threw. Uh, who did they slather <laughs> in there? Like some unnecessary additional barbecue sauce. Who was it? Uh, Katie Holmes. For real. A love interest. Yeah. Yep. It was good to see her. I I was like, oh, shit, she's alive. That's what's up. Yeah, right. I haven't seen her in 15 years. It's been about 15 years, man. I haven't seen her since. Our Batman Begins. Oh, she was in that. See? You see what I'm talking about? (laughs) (laughs) I just remember, what was she in? Uh, Seven Tree Hill or some shit like that? Uh, Eight Tree Hill. Oh. uh, Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek. Hmm. Yeah, man. Okay. Because there was a batch of those shows, like One Tree Hill. Then there was yeah. some old... It was, it was targeted at a black audience. They they missed the mark. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go back to Fresh Prince now. I'm going to go right. back to Martin now. Mm-hmm. In, in, like, you know, in Living Color, uh, Rock. You remember Rock? Mm-hmm. Charles mm-hmm. S. Dutton? Mm-hmm. That show was heavy, yeah. But I didn't get to appreciate that heft and like what it was really about until now. Where, where he, he, man, he's a strong presence. Where's he been? You know what, man? Is he still around? That's how your theater people are, like theater, theater. Like Charles S. Dutton is like Shakespearean type. Like he's a theater guy, and I think he gets a lot of fulfillment out of that. Plus, I mean. He was the lead in the 90s in a show, like a hit TV show, The Rock. He might be eating off of that, too. Or selling cars at a used car dealership. But I think that because he would have cameo roles and, you know, uh, low down dirty shame. Shit mm. like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I could be making it up, but I I uh, fact check. But I think he did some prison time or something and became an actor once he got out. Really? I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Hey, pull that up for us, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> pull that shit up. Someday. Pull that shit up, Jamie. I could be making that up though. Hey, we could be making up a lot of shit. In fact, we will. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. That, that's what's so fun about the world of podcasting. Same yeah, way. man. So this is uh, episode 22, if I'm not mistaken. Brother, that's why I love you. I think so. 
Yeah, I think it's episode twenty two. You know, you, them up. you know, you can scrap seven of those, something like that. But hey, <laughs> hey, I'm sure that's what anybody because I've started a, a, like a lot of people's my like, podcasts from the jump, and I'm like, yeah, they've grown so much, and I'm sure that they look back and they're like, I'm not deleting that shit. Like that was me then. <laughs> right, right, we were all well, terrible in the beginning. You reference Joe Rogan. You ever see his first episode? I haven't seen the first one. No, like yeah, they're chilling dog, in dog in, shit in the attic or something like that. Basically, him and like, Red Band. Right, right. They're right. smashed together on the same laptop. They're all squished. Like, yeah, yeah, man. They were playing with some some type of you know old school filters or something. There's like bubbles all over the screen. Like <laughs> it, it it looks heinous, but you know. Look at him now. Look at him now. You know, it, like it goes back to it's one of my favorite quotes, man, of any uh anybody really, much less a rapper, but currency has this it was just simple, it was quick. If I wouldn't have been that, then I wouldn't be this. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It says everything. That's your boy, currency. That's my brother right there. Yeah. He gets a plug he gets a plug every episode, doesn't he? I think so. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> when you hear this someday, Spit Andretti, just, um, I, yeah, I really do champion you, bro. I really do champion you. Yeah, man. I, uh, I just like to show love and respect. I remember, I remember Jet Life. What, uh, what year is that? 2011? That sounds 10? solid. Yeah. That shit? Back yeah. when it was, um, Spitter. Young Roddy, who's growing mm-hmm. up now, so he's Roddy <laughs> from the from the Plains, thirty first. Um, let's see, the Kenner Loop. So yeah, Roddy, you had trademarked the Skydiver, criminally mm-hmm. underrated. No one even knows he exists. But nah, man, yeah. well, me either. I'm gonna send so, you some of his solo projects. It's gonna be like, bro, this is the flyest shit ever. Okay. Straight up, it's so fun to listen to sonically pleasing. Like that's the whole jet life thing, is uh, yeah. they pay close attention to these sonic environments, just how they construct music. They don't just make songs, you know what I'm saying? It's like, nah, this is all built from the ground up. We had to start with the chassis. Yeah, from de- there, definitely a unique sound. Mm-hmm. Then sure. you have smoke, smoke Dizza. Mm. Oh my gosh. Uh, Criminally underrated out of um, Harlem. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many cats that you would mention from New York that rap. He might be the godfather of it. Like, <laughs> if you just listen to how confidently he spits, like, he's just one of the most confident rappers I've ever heard in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like, it just comes through the speakers. You're like, damn, man. He's just unstoppable and he knows it. Mm-hmm. You know, something to be said about that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I uh, I recognize after listening to your last episode there that I've completely I've fallen all the way off. <laughs> like I am out of touch. I don't know who anybody is, uh, especially all these young cats and stuff. It, just the sound, the, the at least the mainstream sound anyway, is of no interest to me. And I don't know, man. I, I need an education. You need to start sending me stuff again. I am sorry, sir. I will get back on that. Your yeah. stat. Um, yeah. Now, a lot of this is just going to come from my musical universe in general. It might not even be ultra current. Don't need to be. It just needs to be unknown to you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like that's where it which is. I, which I guarantee it will be. <laughs> Straight up, man. Yeah. Um, there's some current shit, too, that even people who are current have no idea exists. And that's where I that's where I live. You know, I I love to live there. I don't like hearing shit that I've heard or shit that I, uh, like, I'm like, um, well, I can't play this. It, like, I'm always, one, I don't know if you noticed this. Gone are the days of people blasting music, like, at, at all. Like, what are people doing? It's quiet as fuck in Los Angeles. Is that an L.A. thing? Like, no, you, you people, must not live in my neighborhood, then. People have their earbuds in and everything. Like, I don't hear shit. <laughs> it's crazy. I'll be the only one. Blast saw a guy, uh, shit. saw a guy walking by the other day with a laptop on his shoulder. Like that was a his, boom that, box? That, that was his ghetto blaster right there, his laptop. Oh, he was bumping no. it. Yeah, man. What? But I hear it all day. 
cars rolling through bumping it you you got to move over to north hollywood you you get back into that shit i just moved from over there a few years ago i was over at the um studio city studio city <laughs> now you're in the main streets of burbank yo these streets are so nice <laughs> so friendly and manicured manicured man they no parking meters to be seen or found no parking mm. enforcement people it's wisconsin <laughs> right it is right. more american flags and police officers per capita than you've ever seen i feel safe yeah it's strange not seeing uh the meter maids out here it's Isn't crazy it? yeah yeah they could kick fucking rocks there's no need for that gig no there's no need no. to need that gig either there's so many things that you can do i think that that's more so indicative of what kind of human being the motherfucker is that applies for that job because you could do everything else mm -hmm. everything else you don't yeah. have to ruin people's days for a living you don't yeah, have had, to do that i had one pleasant interaction with a with a meter maid rolled up behind me it was a street sweeping day mm. and i was i was throwing out i was like 15 minutes late i was like ah, shit i didn't even throw pants on i just threw shoes on to get out the house so i could move my truck and he was already behind me and he was staring at me i see that you know you shouldn't be here yes are you going to move right now yes okay i will not give you a ticket don't do this again hey all right, man. I, I guess he didn't sound so pleasant in my story, but the fact the that way you said it, the fact that he didn't give me a ticket was uh, was you know a redeeming quality. You know, one of their go tos. Oh, hmm. oh, I'm so I'm sir, I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, if even if I wanted to, I mean, there's nothing I can do now. The receipt's been printed. It's already been sent up right, to Cyberdyne. Right, right. Um, right. You know. You know, Cyberdyne Corp, and you know it's up there in the cloud now, and there's no way that we can possibly not ruin your day now. I'm sorry, it's just right. been too late, sir. Yeah, yeah, they, they, I, I've been hit with that shit too. Uh, like they already scanned your license before they walked out of the car. Oh yeah, everything <sighs> in our society has a cancel too button. Late. There's, right. There, like there's not a fucking thing that can't be canceled. Right. But Johnny wants to go back to the office and say, "Hey, I broke a new record today." See, 88 tickets that's what's fucked up right is when you incentivize this piracy sure you know what i'm saying like okay let's make it sweet for you what they do is they separate you from the human you used to be and they turn you into this motherfucking uh just a revenue collector it's just for the you know it's just for that slush fund you don't sure. need my rectangular deposit because the shape of the terrain ain't changing it's the same rectangle it's always been i need it for x <laughs> amount of time and when I return, I'm going to leave this rectangle. Someone else is going to park their shit inside of this rectangle. Mm -hmm. But you giving people tickets for like slightly parking, slightly askew or outside of that rectangle's parameters. Mm -hmm. And that'd be costing some people a day's work. Yeah, it's egregious. Yeah. Those prices are egregious. That's that's a stretch, man. Uh, you know, you want to hit us with like $25 or something like that. Yeah. But, you know, 80 bucks or whatever it is. I've paid at least three of those right outside my house, so it's egregious. That it's break the same the same thing you you talk about incentivizing with the uh, cops or with meter maids. Same with cops, you know. I got a uh, texting and and driving ticket not too long ago, which mm. I get it. I shouldn't have been texting, but you know I'm at a stop light. I figure that's the appropriate place to respond to my wife. Uh, but he got me. He got me on a bike there in Burbank. Yo, in Burbank. Like, <laughs> and they're all over the place. Right there on Magnolia by uh, Portos or whatever got me. And uh, he was a nice fella, too. I was like, okay, we got a nice little interaction going on. And no, he gave me that fat citation. And that was... Damn, what was that? That was almost a couple hundred bucks or something. So, I get you. I got nabbed on one of those too, man. I was really doing. I was really doing my best in life too. I was like, I was literally working. I was like, hey, officer, I was literally working. <laughs> and then uh, he was like, yeah, I don't think it. I I don't think it'll um, 
affect your um you know your insurance or anything like that boo 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 <laughs> immediately right. as he was saying that my shit was going up like <laughs> and it, like that shit'll be there for like a year mm-hmm. before your shit drops i was like man mm-hmm. but then i just had to blame myself for that one for that in particular it's like man you don't even want to look at your lap at all you don't even want to look down at nothing in burbank no no like you don't no. you don't want your eyes to go yeah Cause that's a whoop whoop. They have nothing to do. It's a bunch of uh, Andy Griffiths over here. Yeah, for bunch sure. of do gooder Canadian mountain like Mountie types. Like that. Like there's just no crime. There's no shit to do. Yeah, and uh, back when I used to smoke, no smoking in Burbank. Uh, uh-uh. don't even think about it. You think about it, get hit with a ticket. Really? Yeah, just just in the downtown area. Okay. Yeah, there's no smoking anywhere around there. So when I was doing it, I had to like go down the cut and I felt like I was smoking crack or something like trying to get it in real quick. Yeah. Like looking over my shoulders. Yeah. In New Jack City. Uh, Right. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. Yeah, man. It's so police over. I never noticed because I've been here for like two, two and a half years, something like that now. I didn't notice that I never smelled cigarette smoke. Yeah. At all. What's yeah, yeah. But Good. like, you know, it's different, uh, like the Magnolia portion of Burbank, that like strip that starts going towards North Hollywood, but it's just around the theaters and all those businesses like San Fernando Road or whatever I think it is. But yeah, yeah with the fifty nine fifty nine eleven uh restaurants. Yeah. Man. It's kinda neat being able to walk to that stuff. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm right there. You just walk down. Ah, uh, you know you've been just right yeah, there. Yeah, you're in a good spot. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It was. Um, I'm trying to figure. I've never heard people blasting music in Studio City. You're right there, and, and you said so on your street. People be blasting shit. Yeah, uh, we're right on the border of shit. Starts to get hairy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're in a good spot. Our little neighborhood, it's nice, but like you start going the other side of Magnolia North, that's when shit starts to get hairy. We got a liquor store at the end of the street that some funny business goes on every once in a while. Just yesterday, we had a guy drive by. I was vacuuming and listening to a podcast at the same time. So I got, you know, pounded with noise um, and a big boom goes off. I was like, what the fuck was that? I sounded like uh, Joe Pesci and my cousin Vinny when he's out, uh, <laughs> when he's sleeping in the woods and the owl squawks or whatever. He goes, what the fuck was the that? What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite yeah. movies of all time, man. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it at least 92 times. Oh, my but, gosh. Uh, uh, anyway, I go outside and all, all the neighbors go outside like, what the hell? And his car alarm's going off. Like, we don't see anything. But there was some dude that was walking his uh, dog and he informed us that it was just somebody driving by and they threw out like an M80 or something or some big firework. It's just kaboom. So we got wild shit always going on over here. It's active. It stays active. Mm-hmm. Music. Yeah. All those Utes. <laughs> All those Utes. Uh, sir, what is a Use Ute? Me? Yeah. A Ute? Sorry, Your Honor. You the z- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that back and forth between him and the judge throughout is just hilarious. Oh, my gosh. One time he just had it. He just rolls his eyes and slowly pivots and walks back to his seat. He was just, <laughs> just fed up with this man. Yeah, I saw a, uh, speaking in the neighborhood, I was hanging out with uh, the fellas last night. They came over. We did a little social distancing hangout in the front yard. How are these but, men uh, doing? How are they handling things? They're good. Maintaining. Yeah. Maintaining, yeah. Maintaining their shape, too, or are they a whole new form and shit? <laughs> you know, I'm like, what's going on out hey, here, man? I'm not going to speak to that. <laughs> we gotta stay on the P's and Q's, man. We gotta yeah, stay I'm sharp. Not, I'm, man. Not, I'm not gonna speak to that, but mentally, I'll say they're doing well. Okay, okay. Um, 
nah, they, they, they look good. They look good. But uh, we saw a coyote last night. It's the first time I had seen a coyote in probably like eight years or something. But he just big, big guy, too. Really? Starts, yeah, yeah, walking up the street. Like, uh, he was just on the other side of the street. But we're like, what the? It was probably uh, midnight or something. He was out looking for cats, I'm sure. Oh, shit, yeah. Any little durable guinea pig size cat size. But I don't know. Good. A cat might give a fucking uh, coyote the hands, man. Like a dog no is. Way. You don't think so? No, I think a coyote tear can, shit up. Can a coyote outmaneuver a cat though? A dog, it can, because uh, dogs, depending on the breed, can be garbage as far as athleticism, and just get <laughs> and just get overwhelmed. And they're not really <laughs> fleet of foot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? A dog's yeah, a dog, but, but it's like it'd be stronger than a cat. But a cat is like a ninja. Right. It's probably right. hard yeah, to yeah. fuck with a cat. It's it's not the same level. Like a, a French bulldog is not making the majors. Yeah, he's not making the major leagues. Like that nah. like that fool's playing for JUCO, middle linebacker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like a for Zach sure. Thomas. Like that's the Zach Thomas of dogs. <laughs> Like it's super stout, really strong, but it's a bowling ball, you know. Zach it's got Thomas. Sh- it's got short ass legs, a you know, a, a Mike Allstott neck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they could give two shits about the person walking them for real. Yeah. You know, like they got that. You know, they tend to have those uh, kind of attitudes. To me, it's like, you know, I'm on your leash, but you don't necessarily own me. And you, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, so you can relax when it comes to the ownership aspects of this whole relationship here. I allow you to live, you know. Right. I could yeah. just I could just bite your little neck, you know, when you're taking your little nap, you know. what I'm saying, but I don't, you know. But I I still think uh, I still think a coyote could could snatch up a, a cat pretty quick. I mean, by itself. Although these 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 street cats, you know, Kim and I go walking every day. They are. Uh, they are nimble, fleet of foot, and uh, they're in shape as opposed to our two cats who are, you know, their stomachs are dragging on our floors. <laughs> they, they would definitely get snatched up, but Man. I don't know. You know, coyotes part wolf, so. Yeah, it's a baby wolf. Yeah. Like, it's, a, it's basically all wolf shit. It's coyotes, the nickname yeah, for so. little ass wolf. <laughs> I think I think. So. You know what I'm saying? I know Snopes to disprove that. Like, well, not exactly. So you, it's a derivative of the wolf uh, species. <laughs> um, that's a baby ass wolf, man. Look at that motherfucker. Just a tiny wolf. Right. right. Absolutely. Well, a, a derivative of a wolf would still be a wolf. No. Yeah. It would be a wolf. Yeah. yeah. It's just got another name. Well, Troy was ready to brawl with it. Should it cross the street and come into the yard? He was ready to go. I'm actually not scared of coyotes. I'll punt one. <laughs> in front of its homies to let them know what it would be should they pull up. Right. And, that, right. and, and that's why they chill on the cut. They'll send a scout, you know what I'm saying? Right. Make sure the region's cool and cleared for uh-huh. the rest of them to slide. The, Cause that's their attitude. Like that's their mentality. Like you got to think of how they move. It's like a little bitch ass. You know what I'm saying? They hunt packs. They jump people. They jump dogs. They jump animals. They jump them. Yeah. But they'll send a scout out there. Act like he hurt. He's like, Oh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Flying squirrel to come up like, are you okay, little buddy? And then it's like, are you okay, <laughs> little buddy? He flips up like nothing happened. Right. It's curtains. Yeah. It's over with. Mm-hmm. Nah, but they be chilling out here, man, because, you know, I'm at the foot. I'm like, yeah. I'm like on the mountain mm-hmm. and they just, this is where they live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're on the uh, incline. Yeah. I'm on the incline. So they just. Like you can't be surprised when you see them because they're like motherfucker, this is my crib. Yeah, I'm just wa- I'm just walking to the toilet, you know. From, <laughs> I, I just you know I woke up in the middle of the night, went to the cupboard, grabbed me a snack, then I went to take a piss before I laid back down. So I was doing. I'm just shaped like a coyote. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they be chilling out here. So when you said eight years, I was like, man, I see these motherfuckers. I I haven't seen them as of late, but people have been saying that they've been uh, more bold in general just in Los Angeles because mm-hmm. people have you know not been outside well not anymore but I think that uh, yeah there was a time there where where all of wildlife started to fill in the the holes 
Yeah. It's just like, you know, in like movies, man, you see like a plane crash. That, like the motherfucker be there for three days, but then look like it's been there for three years. Because mm-hmm. I don't know why. That's what nature like, seems to do. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, vines, like mm-hmm. just start wrapping up shit. I'm like, oh. it's like, it's an interesting kind of intelligence when it comes to like, even a house, a house that's been on sale, that lot's been on sale for like a year, maybe four months. It looks different on the inside, like Jumanji and shit. <laughs> like all kind of shit just moved in because they assumed yeah. people moved out and didn't move in. Like they just know. Well, wildlife is thriving in um, uh, shit. Uh, what was the uh, nuclear plant that exploded in the Ukraine? Chernobyl. Chernobyl, yeah. That whole area is wildlife's taking, taking hold, man. Healthy animals, fucking deer, they're like built up an immunity to the radiation. and Bro, they probably have street sharks over there. You know them sharks? <laughs> yeah. you, you know them sharks that wear boot cut jeans? Uh, <laughs> Jordash jeans and shit? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's playing on sci fi right now. Oh, man. Oh, is it? <laughs> wow. They had to. Yeah. You know, sci fi channel, like, we're pretty much going down memory lane. Like, we have the opportunity to be 11. Seven, nine years old again, like really. Um, with work in between, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but yeah. Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Freeze well, frame. Supposed, sci-fi is really uh, targeted towards uh, my father. Loves it. Mm. Put that on while he's you know doing busy work or whatever, but looking up every once in a while to see what types of wacky animals are fighting <laughs> it's like shark to puss versus uh you know gerbil vor gerbil vor yeah <laughs> whatever the fuck gerbil yeah. vor <laughs> yeah. it, it used to be the funniest battles and i'm like damn they didn't try nothing they learned in film school they just slapping no. this on together and they're like no we, like we specialize in camp we specialize in camp and campiness and then i wonder if that's how it started sci-fi channel you know what i'm saying like if that was the modus operandi like all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do lowbrow entertainment uh the graphics are about to be garbage it's like it's going to be a very efficient uh thing that we have going on here as a studio yeah yeah, yeah. they probably wanted to monopolize dog shit yeah like- there's enough people where this is valuable. It's so. clearly a lane there, right? Cause and, and we only have to throw, you know, a couple thousand dollars at this or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> so let's some- give uh, Joe Donut a camera and he'll find a couple buddies and we'll go out there and bang out a feature for, you know, Seven, $79. Mm-hmm. Like, that had to be someone in the boardroom if they have a boardroom. It's probably just a multi purpose room where you have like, uh, what is it? Financial freedom seminars and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know, in that kind of room, <laughs> somebody was like, why don't we just, there's clearly just a lane a, for garbage people that like garbage stuff. Yeah. Just do that. Just uh, just a conference room at the Howard Johnson. Yeah. It's just straight up profit. <laughs> it's just max prof. You know, your Sharknados, there's no need to have sequels to movies like that, but there are. No, yeah. Damn. They must be on. Uh, 17. No, there's at least three. Yeah, yeah, they got they got to at least be on seventeen by now. And like, how sure. much worse can we make this? Well, people keep getting worse, so I mean, there's always a lane. There's always a way. I think have you have you ever seen one of those? I can't do that, Deedon. <laughs> Why would I? We only have a finite amount of time on this earth to live, and I can't squander that. I can't just spend that watching shit like that. I never get that back. That's true. You know? That's true. I'll just learn enough about it adjacently, or I'll get a taste of it, watch a clip or two. Mm-hmm. That's all I need. That's all anyone needs. That's yeah, all I need. Uh, 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 Stefan Urkel was in one of those, I think, wasn't he? My boy Stefan Urkel, probably, man. But it was probably the second when no one was signing on for number one. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get the script and you're like, you got to be kidding the, uh, me. No, I think... uh, Tara Reid was in the first one. Yeah. And since it was dumb successful, 
in a bizarre way. Like they were like, wow, this was a hit. It was at a time when people were at their lowest and they were vulnerable. Boom. That's how you get like uh, the success of Tiger King is when people are at their lowest and just weak, just weakened. The standards are on the floor. And I think, I think one of the guys from uh, uh, 90210 was in it. Oh, like is, Luke is in them now. Oh, okay. I was about uh, to say Luke Perry, but he's gone. He's he's no yeah, longer with he's, us. He's he's long gone. There, uh, rest in power, kid. Yeah, he was uh, he was fantastic in uh, uh, Once Upon a Time. There, that little cameo. He was pretty good. Once Upon a Time. Uh, bu- 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 oh, was he in uh, the Quentin Tarantino Once Upon a Time? Oh, sh- yeah. Man, I was thinking about that Disney shit. You what know, Disney? there's a whole Disney show. A friend of mine, a uh, family friend, Makia Cox, she was one of the stars of that show, If It's Still Going, Once Upon a Time, where they kind of remixed the fairy tales and it's live action and sort of huh. fantastical. Yeah. It's on like ABC or something like that. Can't oh. Remember. You know oh. what I'm talking about? Like the Mad Hatter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm familiar with I, I haven't seen it, but yeah, now I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I watched The Smidge to support her. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, now I'm back to my shows. <laughs> what are you watching now? Six Feet Under. Yo, you went back, son. Yeah. Well, we've been doing that. Um, oh, that's right. You were watching the Sopranos a, it's, before that. It's a yeah, yeah, and uh, it was as good as they said it was. I'm gonna have to check uh, this out. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a weird. It's a weird time because there's so much access to so much content that you're just overwhelmed. You're just inundated with stuff from every direction. Um, so you could watch something new every single day. You could never run out of things to watch, but uh, it overwhelms me. So what I do is I revert back to things that I, I know are probably good. Mm, yeah. That's smart. That I've heard. That's good. And it, I use it as a time to to catch up on things that I never seen. I didn't really grow up with HBO. We didn't have it. Um, mm. So I missed out on a lot of that stuff. The the wire is going to be that's in the queue. Okay. Probably, at, probably after this. Um, I grew up watching but, that. Yeah. Uh, and the Sopranos never saw it and six feet under people have talked about it so and i'm enjoying it we're almost done with the first season and uh we can burn through these things we usually do a couple episodes a night and i like it i dig it six feet under was a part of the same slate of shows that i think um what else was there oz yeah yeah kim that that's another one that's that's in the queue because Kim said that one was really good, but she, she like v- vaguely remembers it, mm-hmm. remembers that it was good, but fine details. Mm. Uh, she didn't stick with her. So we'll give it another shot. I'm just trying to stay will. away from jail at all costs. I'm just like, man, this is <laughs> Vigo Mortensen. Isn't he in that? Oh, is he? I, think I don't so. know. I think so. Yeah, man. I think Vigo Mortensen. Let me look that shit up right now. Vigo. Yeah. I you think he's a damn because the only part of yeah, Oz man. that I saw was like him probably about to rape a dude. I was like, that's his face burned into my uh, memory. That was before <laughs> Lord of the Rings. So mm. so he was uncool before he was very cool. So, yeah. You know what I'm I, saying? The only one I, the only person I n- know that was in it was J.K. Simmons. But I don't know if he was uh Wow. Uh, a lead or what just a minor character or what you have ernie hudson in this mug too oh, okay Lee yes he, he's one of the main characters there and you have who else yeah harry perino okay the black who dude from... is yeah yeah he's he's terrific mm-hmm. and uh he's always been a really good actor but what the hell's he been doing lately you know what Christopher Milioni. I don't think he is in this. Um, Harry Perrineau was, he started becoming the villains and shit. So, Really? In what? Man, Sons of Anarchy? He was a was, was he in pen. That? Hell yeah. He had a big ass arc. He was like the rest of the show. Oh, 
shit. Yes. Yeah. And uh, spoiler alert, he gets killed. For um, sure, he had to fucking go. And and then and then the dude who I didn't really care for, kind of assumed his position, more of a stoic guy, and he started working with Jax, didn't he? Yeah. Um. He, he was like... Because uh, he was the intermediary between those two. Right, right, right. Right? Because he was the cooler of he and uh, Perino's character. Mm-hmm. He was the cooler of the two. He was the big buff dude in the suit. Yeah. As well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, more stoic. Yeah. More wooden. But, you know, he was more of a person. He was, he was less of a sociopath, a psychopath than Harry Perino's character was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so Jax is basically off of the strength of the relationship they had built because he was the better version. <laughs> mm. Just went into business together. Them and Diosa and all that shit. Yeah. I for- man, I forgot about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, he was one of the main cats. I was like, get him out of here. That, an episode, you know, just an all-time episode of television that sticks with me is uh, uh Jax's boy getting uh Hope. Kitten. Yeah, Ope. You see how I clipped. said that, man? Yeah. Did you feel the weight of that <laughs> Ope? It just cut yeah. on the ground. That was that was heavy. That Bro. was a heavy episode. That that one got me choked up. Man. Uh, but that it just something about that just obviously the intensity of it but it felt it felt real and it felt like you were watching your boy that you you had been friends with for however many years at that point you know he's he, there's no way out of this situation and and we're forced to watch what's going to happen next that shit was heavy that was the power or that is the power of ryan hurst mm-hmm. because he makes you give a shit about him no matter what kind of character he's playing man like even in his weird role that he had because he got to from Ope, he got to branch out into more obscure kind of roles now you know that you're in your actor bag and you get to just have fun. You just get paid mm-hmm. to really have fun when now you're being offered shit. And I'm sure in his stint with um, Farmiga, um, mm. you know what I'm talking about? Mm-mm. Um, Who's that? Vera Farmiga, she was in a Bates Motel with okay. Freddie Highmore. She was Norman, she was Norma Bates, yeah. Norman Bates' mom. Um, yeah, yeah. Ryan well, Hurst you... had a weird character in there. Oh, on Bates Motel. Yeah, Bates Motel. I've never. Cool. She's really great, by the way. But I've, I've never seen that. Uh, I've never seen that show. Like Vera Farmiga is one of the most like she's probably one of the dopest actors of our time. Like when mm-hmm. it's said and done, yeah, like she's about to be even. Even her role in like Running Scared with Paul Walker, who murdered, who <laughs> killed it. I know how that sounds. Rest in power, yeah. brother. Y'all know what the fuck yeah. I'm talking about here. Um, man, she's super intense. Mm-hmm. Like she's just locked in. And then her younger sister, Taisa Farmiga, her first acting gig for real was on season three of American Horror Story Coven. Mm-hmm. And man, it's just in the DNA. Mm-hmm. It's just in there because it was yeah, like weird. she's been doing it. It's it's weird how much they they look alike too. They look the same. Yeah, yeah. She looks yeah. like Baby Vera. Right, right. That's <laughs> it, yeah. It, she she yeah. She just looks. Uh, they look the same, but she just comes off a lot. Uh, younger, and you would think it's her daughter or something, but uh, she's way yeah, they're younger. Both, they're mm-hmm. both terrific. Because yeah. I think that um, when she did, when she did American Horror Story Coven, Taisa, she was probably sixteen. Hmm. And then after that, Vera, she directed her first film, and then in that she put Taisa. Because I mean, at that point, she's like, "Yeah, you're good." You know what I'm saying? Is- yeah. Is that a show that you watch, American Horror Story? Used to. Yeah, I heard that. It uh, went, I, I never, I never watched it, but I heard that uh, you know it took a nosedive. Mm-hmm. It went the way it went. Mm-hmm. It most certainly did. <laughs> Freak Show came about, and I was like, I'm gonna go this way now. Mm. Especially when there's so many shows. Back to your point, when there's so many shows, man, 
I don't have time to be squandering on shows that I'm just not interested in. Stories right. I'm not interested in, tales I'm, not, I, I'm just not interested in. Or if it's the same thing, exactly. Mm-hmm. But we're, like, we're just going to shuffle musical chair these people around, the actors around. Mm-hmm. Now it's more difficult to suspend my disbelief. That's the problem with anthology. Sometimes if you don't do a completely different kind of tale, mm-hmm. or if what you're trying to say is too on the nose, it's just not even clever, you're like, now I'm being just talked at, not spoken to, not, you know, it's preachy. I'm like, oh, I know what you're doing. So uh, from that perspective, then do you like Fargo? Because I they saw. they don't they don't uh, reuse any actors, right? Like it's a new story, new characters, new faces each each season. That's a better idea. Because I started, I probably watched the first one or two episodes of Fargo mm-hmm. um, with Billy Bob, because that's my boy right there. Like, Bad Santa, have you seen that? I, you know, I've never seen Bad Santa. Yeah, Go I've never seen it. Do yourself a favor, sir. <laughs> Bad Santa, one and like two. It, like, it's, it's flashed on, uh, like, TNT. It's one of those movies that's always on TNT. You don't want to watch it there. season or whatever, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, you want Billy hey, Bob to be Bob. Billy Bob. It's Billy Bob as Billy Bob can be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need to, mm-hmm. Him. No, he, he, he was good in Fargo, for sure. Man. Yeah. I mean, he, he seems like he's a wild man. He's, he's not going to disappoint. Yeah, he's a part of the old guard. You know, like that, uh, that wily, wild... Um, you know, super experienced. I'm, I mean, life experienced actor who's been through it all. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Just been willing to live his life fully, not giving mm-hmm. a flying fuck what industry had to say or want where they wanted to put him or place him, and you know him whining about leading man this, leading man that. He he just instead was like, I'm gonna just be undeniably fucking me. You're gonna have to come to me to get me. That's it. Yeah. You mm-hmm. can't, there is no Billy Bob Thornton type. Yeah. If you want someone like that to be on your project, you have to call me. And in fact, <laughs> call my representatives, have them reach out to me. Mm-hmm. That's it. One of one. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a unique unique cat for sure. Um, I've never seen Sling Blade either, which is... Uh, People always... Have, you haven't seen no, it's an eighties fucking thing. I, I man. was I was actually <laughs> waiting for that reaction. Yeah. No, yeah. I wasn't I didn't exist. Yeah. It's so much that I have seen that I shouldn't have seen. <laughs> you can forgive me for the lack of having seen all of Sling Blade. What about this one? You you will react. I, I've never seen the Godfathers. That's okay. Yeah. I okay. accept you as you are. Mm-hmm. I really do. And I haven't seen all of them. Uh, you know, I saw the first one. Well, you're supposed to you're supposed to stop it too, right? I think, yeah, because three is I hear is dog duty. Is you can mm-hmm. noob with dog food. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that there's any need to see three. And yeah. as slow as that shit is already, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. That's a commitment. That's I a think commitment. that's why I think that's why. Not, and certainly now, I just don't have the time anymore. So if if I'm gonna commit to something. Uh, you know, it's got to be, and, and that is worth it, but that's a hell of a, you know, to watch at least the first two, what is that, like, you know, 22 hours to get through those two movies? Um, uh, yeah. G- give or take a couple hours? Yeah, give or take a couple of fucking hours, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 95 hours, you know? But then, of course, Kim would tell you, uh, I rewatched some of the same stuff, just, I just beat it to death, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings or something. You know, I've seen that. Or Braveheart. Braveheart's on. Forget it. I'm locked in. When you go through more than one sweep of something, though, you figure out more things about what made it work to begin with. Like, what got me to want to see it and watch it all the way through the first time? You're not mm-hmm. going to figure that out the first time. Mm-hmm. There's so many gems, so many jewels. Like, music, for like for example. Taking that shit into the lab. Like that's what me and my family call it. We have to like <laughs> we get a project or a song. We got to take that shit into the lab. We have mm-hmm. to analyze it. We got to run tests. You know, there are multiple different kinds of tests: delivery, cadence, the production, 
the mm-hmm. soundscape, the concept. You know what I'm saying? Is there e- is there even any? If is this even music, mm-hmm. or is this just a song? Is this just a compilation of songs that they called an album? Big deal, you know. Yeah. So I mean, mm-hmm. you got to put the heat to that Bunsen burner right there, and mix this potion into the earth. The Erlen Meyer flask, you got to run some tests <laughs> to figure out whether or not this shit is legit or not, whether yeah. it's dope or not, you know, because again, you are the king of your time, you know, sure. that's it, sure. the master of your time and the way that you spend that shit. Don't get it back. Can't squander it. Right. If it's just not my shit, not, you know, not get something a chance, but if I know, you know, it's one of the good things about having a pretty solid filtration system it's just like no i'm not gonna like it (laughs) sometimes before you get to i don't Mm -hmm. that's called efficiency to me like yeah i'm not gonna like that you know or there's just a few beats that like a few boxes it checks that it shouldn't have i'm like yeah see you know they shouldn't have went on and did that said that yet you know what i'm saying i ain't because i have shows waiting in the queue that i know going to be yeah. solid because they did check those boxes or you know mm-hmm. meet up with a certain a different kind of criteria and I'm like yeah I'm gonna just invest in that art right there no, yeah. di- no disrespect to that but I can't see it all yeah I can't hear it all I can't see it all yeah you know and that's called taste <laughs> get your taste together well and, and, and Shit. to speak to to, to speak to that we're, we're on the uh, old HBO run but Back then, what like the late '90s, early 2000s, it was like HBO had a monopoly on uh, like premium television. Like they weren't missing with any of those shows, mm-hmm. from what I understand. You know, Hell I've only yeah. seen a, I've only seen a couple, but uh, I'm looking forward to the rest. And so far, Six Feet Under's been good. But back then, like who else? Who else was doing that? Who else could do that? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody like they even had stand up comedy. So we grew up. Uh, right, right. Nobody was. That's that's where the specials were. My weekend was spent on HBO, like the yeah. whole family sitting there on a lazy boy um, in Independence, Kentucky. And we were on a lazy boy <laughs> and we were watching the fights on the weekend and we were watching the stand up comedy specials on the weekend. Carlin, Rock, whoever it was, um, mm-hmm. Stephen Wright. We were watching specials or we were watching people beat the fuck out of each other. Mm -hmm. Roy Jones Jr., Mike Tyson, you name it. All the fights. You know, those were our plans. Yeah. Wake up in the morning to the smell of bacon. Cheese eggs, (laughs) pancakes, maybe some Grand's biscuits, the fluffy kind that pop up out of the poof. (laughs) You know, they kind of spill up out of the, uh, the canister. Then you had to clean because they had their music on. So if Well Downing was playing or some mm-hmm. Stevie Wonder or some shit. And I'm like, man, we about to have to clean up. The whole damn house is already clean. <laughs> Just to prove to them that we deserve food. But after that, boy, it, you know, now we're barbecuing all day. And then, you know, at night, the shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's what it was for. No one else is doing that. You know, Cinemax wasn't doing that. That was for the soft core. Mm. You know that was a, uh, you know the you you know the highly forbidden Beverly Hills bordello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you laugh because you're like I I've heard that ter- that name yeah. before. Yeah, the Beverly Hills bordello, Real yeah. Sex 19. Yeah, on HBO they had all the cutting edge damn programming. How, yeah, how I forget how I. Man, because it's such a weird time. That seems like a lifetime ago. Because, because even the internet was, was still in its infancy. It seemed like Damn, uh, we might not but, have even had it for all of that. But I, I don't. I remember catching some of those, and and it was like, whoa, shoot. Uh, this is such why I shouldn't be watching this stuff. I, you know, but I don't know how I saw any of that. Because again, we didn't have we didn't have HBO, so I I don't know how I would have even found it. But yeah, I know what <laughs> I know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> bro. We we didn't have cable until uh, shoot. I was in high school, I guess. 
uh, and we had the, the the movie channel that we had was Cinemax. Cinemax. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. But of course, they weren't doing. They weren't. I don't think Cinemax was. I think it was strictly a movie channel at that time. Mm. I don't think they were creating anything. Some any family origins. members, some family members had that uh, that hood scrambler box. Yeah, my buddy had one of those. Yeah, uh-huh. you see and the it, lines on the screen. The old, you're the like, old oh black wow, box. Yeah, yeah, the old black box, and you would see. Yeah, man, there was this time I uh, I don't know when you're a young buck coming of age you do things that you as an adult question you're like why did you do that you knew you were going to get caught doing so we had direct tv <laughs> and i had the remote in my hand and i was in the uh i don't know 900s wherever the damn playboy channel was spice channel all that shit and i that's was a, like that's a, yeah you're right that's in like the thousands isn't it like yeah it's deep not to be found. It's not. Channel, it's not to be found. Channel sixteen ninety nine. You have to really try. <laughs> you have to try. Right. We're not thinking that. Like our brains aren't fully developed. Our frontal lobe is still fucked up. It's still cooking. We're not ready, yeah. right? Right. So, I do this thing. I did this thing where you see how far you can get. You just kind of toe the edge of disaster, just to you know for the thrill. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to go to buy and not do it. And Click. Now I did it. Thank whoop. you for your purchase. Three ninety nine. I'll figure something out. <laughs> now I got to come up with a story. Something that really, really, really is able to. I got to sell them on this. One, how I ended up all the way the fuck over there. And yeah. two, how I slipped and fell onto the OK button. Twice hit the arrow down once and then confirmed that yes, I did in fact want to make that purchase. Right. I, I, I accidentally followed these seven steps to, to purchase this. <laughs> I slipped and fell, man, and I did everything required to, like you said, go through all seven steps of making a sound, solid purchasing decision twice. Two different channels, two different shows. Yep. Your parents are way smarter than you at that point. Mm-hmm. Especially, oh man, my dad. I'm sure a pops is actually proud. On a primal level, he's proud of you. He now right, you right. in the, in in the bedroom. Yeah, in the bedroom. You, you have arrived. Talking to mom. Yeah. Yeah, you're curious and you're doing what I clearly did. We had magazines and pinups and shit like that, posters, all that shit. This is it. So here we are now. The thing is, you know, you thought you were slick and you thought that I was stupid and now I'm pissed because of that. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a big deal. I sweat way more than he did, but boy, I definitely <laughs> did, bro. The bullshit ass channels twice. One, what, one sitting. What was the outcome? I mean, would, did you just get a stern talking to? It was just a stern talking beat? to, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't get my ass beat this time, yeah. I didn't get balled up, man, because I think that there was that moment. Yeah, you know, I kind of foisted that moment upon him, but it was that moment. It, w- it wasn't like that. I'm interested in the birds and the bees. Can we sit down and discuss? I don't know. Like it happens in movies that way. It don't happen mm-hmm. in life that way. No, you do some dumb shit or some shit that's like, you know, it's next level. And then, you know, your parents, I guess, realize, okay, he's at that level now. Right. This is where his head is. I guess we, you know, we used to casually talk about all kind of shit anyway. Just talking shit at like mm-hmm. just at the table, so it really wasn't a need to have an isolated moment because mm-hmm. we always used to just talk about shit out in the open like that. Yeah, like you them know. talking all crazy like uh, like adults do in front of us. We sitting there chilling. Mom is like Mark, <laughs> <laughs> and we're sitting there like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a big deal. He was just like, "Don't do this shit no more." All that right, would've, that would have been a problem. For us, I'm mm. not sure how my father would have handled it, but yeah, this certainly would have been a problem. Um, 
It was probably the. Do you think that he used to always say this? I just uh, we just talked on the phone about it. Uh, anything that you could possibly think about doing, I done already done. Anything you could possibly think about doing, I'm thinking of world travel and all that. <laughs> but I'm like, I understand what you mean. I get the. Yeah, I understand. I get it. Yeah. Yes, because I'm gonna say the same shit to my, you know, to my youngin. Like, look, man, anything you could think about doing, because. If you have a blanket statement like that, it probably mitigates the disasters. It's like, well, anything I could think of doing, his mind only goes so far. His like imagination at that time only goes so far. He, he like he's only experienced so much, or she. It's like mm-hmm. to the extent of what they think that they can get away with, they can't because I done already said anything. Man, I don't know the way kids kids are so grown now. Man. It's a different time. I know. They've, they've, they've been, uh, the door has been open to this realm of, of possibilities that we, we didn't have. Yeah. It's just, it's just, everything's moving faster and faster and faster and you're inundated with more and more and more information. I don't know. By the, by the time kids are like eight acting like they're 32, you know, and uh, what they're what they're dreaming of, what they're what they want to experience is, is totally different than it was for us. You're right; we did have limited possibilities, but I guess that's that's just that's just the way it goes. And when they have kids, it'll be even. I, I don't know, man. Have you, I, I, man? I've been thinking about this, and I'm sure you have. Clearly, have. I'm thinking of what it would take to raise decent human beings today. Well, that's it's not a yeah. thing. It's like challenge accepted for sure. Like I'll I'll rise to any occasion, but I'm just wondering what it's going to take because I think that early on, like it's got to happen early. You know, you like you got to lay down the tracks early. Yeah, it's uh to go back to what you said about the. Uh the coyote and exerting your dominance, whatever yeah. you gotta, you gotta let them know. Like, here's, here's what's about to happen. You're not going to come over here and attack me. Now, not, you don't apply that same, you know, principles here or actions in this scenario, but yeah, you got to start on them young. I think you just gotta, I mean, there needs to be a, a fine line between, right and wrong i know that sounds overly simplistic but uh you gotta let them know that you have their back this is right this is wrong that's it and it's like you gotta let them make mistakes but it's certain mistakes i don't think that people necessarily need to make at all learn from other people's fucking mistakes like i've gotten so far observing listening and just going yeah, I'm not about to do what he just did ever. And then other mistakes I I make. You know what I'm saying? That's something that you've got to do and learn for yourself. And then the other wisdom, like you just soak up game. Just soak it up. Be a sponge. Soak up that game. You don't have to experience it that way, the same way that they did. They did that for you. You didn't know it. But to understand that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, you don't have to always headbutt the corner of the barn. You mm-hmm. can see that guy bleeding <laughs> over there. He already did the shit. He already tried it. Right, right. You know, so just be aware. Increase your awareness. Um, sure. And I think that you're right. It's just early in the game. They know. Because I carry my parents, I carry my family around wherever I go. Mm. Um, If that makes any sense. It's like, no, I do, I do the same thing. Hey, you we're, know, a product, we're a product of uh, the way we were raised. Yeah. I just, yeah, I get a lot of what my mom you you just see you just see you, you what your experience was and the things they uh you know the things they gifted you whether it be morals examples whatever it is but yeah you carry that and apply that to your every day mm. you know, my mom's not here anymore but uh i certainly still uh i feel her just in the way that the, the the way I approach things, the way I think about things, the way I might, 
treat somebody or react in a certain situation. And the same with my father, you know, but you're a product of, of your parents. That's why it is important. Yeah. But encouragement for sure. I, I just, I, I think that, uh, you see, I don't want to pass any judgment because I have a kid on the way, you know, I've not been a parent. And congratulations, so I can't, man. Like that I makes my day to just hear that, man. Everybody around me is reproducing out this mug. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. I appreciate I'm that. I'm taking notes. I, I can't, I can't speak to actively being a parent until she's here on the scene. But, uh, she, what, what I observe. Yeah. Yup. Yeah. She's my nameless, nameless queen right now. Hey, yeah. that's, that's a dope name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a queen nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Nameless queen. Absolutely. Uh, but um, I, I, I just, I just see sometimes there seems to be like a negotiation going on between parents and, and children. Yeah. They which, think that they have an equal seat at the table of their own affairs. Right. You don't right. have and any fucking power, but I can show you how to get in on your own outside right. of this kingdom, my kingdom, outside of this. You can be as powerful as you want to be, but understand that you won't necessarily get there if you don't understand how the system works. Right. Right. No, yeah, that that's precisely it. I mean, you're right. This idea that uh, we're on the same level, um, you have an equal seat at the table. That's right. And this, this negotiation that goes on. So they have this idea that they can wield some kind of power and uh, manipulate whatever situation it is. And then the parent feels like, well, I love them so much. I don't want to come down on them for the way they're acting or I want to respect their emotional state or whatever, whatever it is. But it, it just leads to this entitlement in these, these, you know, I was I was talking to my brother the other day, and he's like, you know, you, how, how often do you see, uh, like a mom, a single mom at uh, at a Target or something, with four or five kids, you know, like uh, uh, just just calm, just just with her, roaming the store, doing whatever. He's like, you don't really see that anymore. You, you see like kids running around. You see like you know. Kids, kids, kids just acting up or screaming or crying, and the mom's trying to talk them down. It's like, man, there's just, there's got to be some kind of discipline going on. But, you know, and from one, what you're you also can, seeing, you can, you can love your children, but you can, you can still uh, make it quite clear that, you know, I'm, I'm here for you. I will raise you. I will love you. But uh, yeah, you don't have an equal seat at the table. No, and that's also how not, life goes. Not for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Because the kid, you know, they, they hit the real world and realize that nobody cares. Nobody cares how you feel. Nobody cares that you're upset about this thing or you didn't get this thing that you've been getting since you were you were one. You know, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. This is what it is, and life's hard. They have to get accustomed to no. I got so used to no, I think about it, maybe, <laughs> but in my brain, it was probably not. And it's not that I went without, hmm. but I had to earn my keep in every way. I had to conduct myself in a way that was worthy of whatever it was that I wanted to get mm-hmm. out of the situation or you know, for Christmas, whatever, Which whatever makes it was. sense, like driving privileges, a cell phone. Like I was surrounded by kids who had phones and shit and didn't need them. And I didn't get one until I needed one, like that sort of thing. So yeah, when you instill in someone who's young, this, um, this innate humility, like, okay, I have to work for this, whatever it might be. I have to behave in a way that uh, makes someone want to do something for me, mm-hmm. that changes everything. 
Mm. Because if you conduct yourself in life the same kind of way, that makes you a hell of a salesman. Mm. That makes you, that gets you so much closer to understanding the art of the pitch. And everything in this life, so many of these things are about the art of the pitch. Are you going to buy what I'm selling you? Yes. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. That no that you got ready, just loaded up in the chamber, ready to fire off at my fucking forehead, it's going to get turned into a yes somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. That's the mentality. That doesn't always happen, but that's the mentality. That'll get you so much closer to that yes, I'm telling you, than expecting the yes and getting the no. Because if you expect the yes and get the no, you never learn how to tailor your approach. You never right. learn how to use neurolinguistic programming or um, you never learn the art of communication. You never learn how to mood match to get to where someone's level is currently mm -hmm. so that you can ease the transition of ideas and commerce. You never learn those skills. I had to learn so many skills. I had to learn so many different ways to get to a hopefully a yes. Mm -hmm. I was interrogated for everything. So I be I started to interrogate my own decision making. Mm -hmm. So you just run it through your parents' filter. You know, <laughs> all of the questions like, look, can I go over to Chris Perry's house? Shout out to Chris. Uh, you know, they're getting together. That either doing this. Who's going to be there? Right. So that, so I learned early on how to vet. Mm -hmm. How to vet. You know what I'm saying? My dad's just taking a survey of the land. What's the environment like? Are you right. aware? You need to be right. aware. This is what's going to be required if you are to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and uh, this can happen. That can happen. This can happen. Consequences. He was always worst case scenario. Yeah, and that 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 stuff is invaluable, man. It will keep you alive. Like he always <laughs> made it clear. Because parents today, back to your point, is to be their child's friend. Yeah. And my man. dad used to always tell me, my mom and dad, especially my dad, used to be, I ain't here to be your friend. That ain't my job. I'm here to keep you alive. Black man, like I, I, I am here to make sure that you are way better than me, like a better version, like not even a version of me, but just the best you that you can possibly be. That's my responsibility. And I yeah, know I that I come down hard on you sometimes and, you know, you don't always get your way. But that isn't what this life is about either. It's about finding your way, finding a way to get shit done. But you can't do that if you always get what you ask for and want. You got to work. Yeah, it's, it's probably uh, probably the number one role of being a parent is being a conduit to a better life for your, you know, child. So, yeah, instilling those types of things and and hard work seems to get overlooked all the time, all the time. People don't speak of it enough. It's it's about uh, you know like. Uh, like handing out the participation trophies and stuff. I know that Man. that's been beat to death, but as an example, that that's sort of stuff, just, just, uh, you know, welcoming somebody in or, or making them part of something and then giving them a award just to make them feel good where no, it's you know, hard work. It's man. fucking hard debilitating, man. It is giving a motherfucker a trophy who didn't with their skill set earn it. Yeah, I'm telling you because they're gonna always expect that bitch ass trophy right there, and yeah. they did, and they didn't cultivate any kind of skills by which to possibly, it'll mean so much more to them, acquiring some hardware like that, like getting some hardware like that, if they actually worked as hard as they could, right, to build the skill set needed to best their opponent, and then get that damn trophy, take that trophy. It's one thing to receive a trophy, but to take one. That's what we mm -hmm. did. We had to mm -hmm. go and take that shit. We had to go and get which is, it. Which is the way it should be. And when you, 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 you're not equipping them with the, with the proper tool set for life if you're just handing them things. It needs to be worked for. It needs to be earned. It needs to be taken. Yeah, you go and take that thing, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I was going somewhere with that. but uh, Because when you fail enough in that pursuit, yeah. That's when you get so good uh -huh. at not failing anymore. You know, you'll fail in new right. ways, but all along the way are the level ups required to not fail the same way. Fail up, 
mm-hmm. upward. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. mm-hmm. in that you're still climbing, you're still growing, and mm-hmm. you will get closer to getting that trophy. And I'm telling you, I used to wear a t-shirt on my football team. We had this saying, and it was on the black, on the black of the shirt, on the back of the shirt. The journey is the reward. Mm-hmm. It's not about the destination. It's not about what you thought you wanted at that moment in your life. It's about everything that you did to get there. The people you met, the places you've been, the things that you had to do mm-hmm. to get to that point, to get to what you thought was the destination. Realizing, I, I always had this mentality, and I have it now. Um, when I climb up any mountain and I get to the summit, it's the base of the next fucking mountain. It's just endless. Mm-hmm. And that's how I feel when I get something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, got a new whip the other day, and then, and then to me, hell, it took it took a few days to even smile about it because I was just thinking about the work. <laughs> I was just thinking about the work that I had to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The moment you achieve something, just the new mountain range pops up, you know, so I just ascend to the bottom of a new mountain and that's how it should be you know I don't take that back from like I think like I look back at the struggles and the turmoil and you know I don't know how I'm here today but I'm here and that's the point you're here and you gotta look back and understand like back to Currency's quote if I wouldn't have been that then I wouldn't be this right all of that was all of that was needed necessary you know Mm -hmm. because nothing like what what makes a diamond what creates a diamond pressure pressure time heat that's Mm -hmm. it yeah that's what makes a fucking diamond Mm -hmm. you know yeah man that's it and 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 hard work has never failed never Uh, failed because there's there's never been a single case where that's that's failed maybe Maybe you didn't get to where you thought you might, but the things that you learned, like to speak to what you just said, it's the journey, you know, it's the invaluable things you pick up on the way. Like, I, I just know that uh, working corporate jobs or something, working with somebody who who has a thousand questions, won't seek out an answer to their questions they just ask you to give them the answer and there's so much hand holding that goes on. Those people don't last. Mm. They get fired. You know, they're not used, used to problem solving and, and really putting in the work, figuring things out for themselves and, and trying to do as much as they can to learn other things to avoid the questioning going forward. You know, uh, those people don't last. And, uh, there's a book. There's a book that I finished um, a couple of months ago. It's called Range, R A N G E Range, by okay. David Epstein, and it's about. It's due in large part like it's about that. It's about yeah. actually having range, the benefit in being a generalist in life versus being a specialist, mm-hmm. and how a specialist has to, has to one depend upon past experiences and they can tend to they tend to only be able to draw from that alone and thus they can't adjust very well this isn't all of them but a lot of them can't adjust well to variables Mm -hmm. a domain that may change before they had equipped themselves to understand or adapt to the new one versus Mm -hmm. someone who you know like like Andy Roddick or something like yeah, he's a tennis superstar, legend, but he started playing soccer first. And oh, and he was a wrestler. And he was this, he played football and that before he finally circled back around in life to what became his true love and his passion and that was tennis. Mm-hmm. So you better believe that he's wrestling when he's on the tennis court. You like you like you better believe he's doing footwork drills like he's playing soccer when he's moving his body on the Mm -hmm. tennis court in a way that someone who only did tennis every moment of their lives had all the best coaches, had all of the resources financially. Cause you know, that's, you know, that tends to be a, 
with the exception of like the uh, Williams sisters, that's more of a prestigious kind of sport where you got to have loot, you know, figure skating, like you got to have money. Yeah. What, 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 not to get off track, but why is that? Why is tennis expensive? You need a racket. I don't know, man. I guess maybe because the courts are only the clubs on. Yeah. And Cause clubs it's a club. Yeah. It's probably that like the, the shit tends to be at that's, like that four seasons. Like- yeah, it seems like outside of basketball, maybe that that would be the cheapest. You need tennis shoes and a racket. Hey, but man, anyway. I'm telling you, <laughs> look at where tennis courts be. By right, places right. you ain't really trying to kick it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Brentwood, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Various places like that just, um, they, like, they tend to be, the, like, these tennis courts, like, the good schools have the tennis courts. You know what I'm saying? Like your preparatory academies and shit like that. They do tennis. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess. Because other than that, you have a wristband, which you don't mm-hmm. need. Because, I mean, you know what I'm saying? They got wristbands and shit, and then a the little skirt, and then uh, that's it. A little ball cap. There's nothing, there's nothing worse than watching people who are garbage tennis players play tennis. And I, <laughs> I, I say that as, yeah, I've, attempted to play tennis maybe twice in my life but when you see them at the parks and they're just like lobbing it up it, it does make you appreciate uh roger federer or all the pros oh, venus man. serena whatever what they could do because you see what happens with regular people uh, completely unskilled but they're, but they're taking it serious and they're running back and forth but they keep like how dull is it when you keep serving and you keep hitting the net like Yo, you, you can't you can't actually play the game because you're so bad. You, you can't just play keep the hitting game. the net. Yeah, I don't. Know. I mean, that's how I felt, man, about volleyball. Sometimes, <laughs> man, like um, you know, how, that, that, you know, that when someone one. throws like a, uh, they try to throw an ace, like spike that shit down, and uh-huh. then I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, <laughs> you know, I'm doing this, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and then this is. It goes twenty yards it, in the wrong it's direction. It's a fireball flying at your face, and you're like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" And then you're like, "All right, they do it." <laughs> Misty, Misty May, Misty May be like, you know, and, yeah. But she, sometimes she dives and just throws a fi- a fist out there, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it's bouncing off. When you think about it, they can in a moment, like, like in an instant. Judge the rotation of their wrist, the angle of their wrist, the blade of their wrist, because the ball yeah. is bouncing off of that. It looks like, yeah. But with me, I'm like up, oh, boom, and it's going this way, boom. Or it's going all that all way. you're trying to do is is make contact. You're not you're not reading shit. I'm not you're reading a damn to- <laughs> thing. I'm trying. I'm I'm trying not to uh, drown in the sand, face first, you know, mouth first, and then I'm trying not. I'm just trying to hit the ball, right? Which is a challenge. Knowing all well when you do make contact, that's going like twenty yards in the wrong direction. Yeah, and the energy yeah. cost is is, is just depressing. <laughs> right. I dove right. and then I had to lift right. my just body lift off of the sand, and it's yeah. sand. <laughs> Respect. And but you, but you I, I met right. Misty May and them, and I was like, "Y'all, respect because this shit is not easy. Y'all make it look so easy." Yeah, you're right. I've I've never dissected it like that, but the idea that in a millisecond they're adjusting their wrist, their arm, whatever it is, yeah, to to coincide with the rotation of the ball and the the speed and where they want to go. Maybe they should because when they do that, they're always trying to set. They got to set up the partner too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, wow, there is a lot that goes into it that I didn't take into account. Martial really arts about martial volleyball. arts gets you thinking about everything like uh, that. Yeah, kung fu because it's that attention yeah. to detail. Yeah, yeah. As a uh, as a, would you call yourself? Nah, you wouldn't call yourself. But you've been in the martial arts game for some time. Mm-hmm. I was going to call you an expert, but you probably wouldn't accept that title. Or maybe you would. I don't know. You not, martial arts not an expert. Martial no. artist, not an expert. Because you, because you, you stay, you stay a student, student of the game your whole but, life. Uh, how painful is it for you to watch two dudes brawl who can't fight? Uh, it's entertaining. 
it's entertaining but it's but it's, it's rough at the same time it's cringeworthy like it's oh, rough man he can't he can't even throw a punch let alone fight i'm like man he's he's a uh... He looks like the uh, the wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man at the used <laughs> <Right>. car dealership. <laughs> As most most guys that can't fight, like you know, I I like that. I'm not a fighter. I'm not a martial artist, but I like to think that I could at least throw punches. You know, I got a bag in the garage, not kicks, not kicks. That those I keep to myself. <laughs> I can't, but uh, no. I like to, Hey, I like think I could at least throw punches, but uh, hey, you know. a, kick, a kick can get places a punch can sometimes, man. You 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 know, my hips. I got the hips of like a eighty two year old from playing hockey and stuff, and mm. it's just like yeah, having to push off. Yeah, it's it's no bueno. You got to open them up. That's important yeah. anyway, just as a human. Like at as as you get older and you you um sit often, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You need to really work on your flexibility and op- open your hips because what you do when you sit down is you, um, this is bro science, deactivate your, <laughs> you, you know, your hip flexors and shit like that. And mm-hmm. so that muscle is shortened mm-hmm. to yeah, compensate, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It'll, Kim Kim actually speaks to that quite mm-hmm. a bit, the hip flexors and yep. how tight how tight you are and stuff. And you know, she's, she's years as a dancer, so. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah She's yeah. one of the most humble human beings. Yeah. I don't think we've ever talked about. Maybe once. But I didn't even get into it. It's it's like it seems like something that she's happy to leave back there. Yeah, she's well, she's she's moved on. Uh yeah, she was excited to transition from that to, to acting and of course now being a mom, but uh yeah, I mean, we'll just be watching. Like uh, Six Feet Under, actually, an episode came on with it's, it's like a, a mini dance sequence for some infomercial or something. It's like, oh, yeah, I know, blah, 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 blah. I know all these dancers used to work with them. And so it'll be funny. We'll just be watching anything and she knows who it was, what they were doing. But yeah, I remember our first, my first date with her. Uh, she was telling me some of the stuff that she, she had done and, uh, told me she had danced for for prince uh she went on tour with prince and uh i was like damn that's awesome she was the real deal yeah she went i think maybe i went outside to smoke or something either way i i I text troy right away because i know troy would appreciate that but i sent the text back to her (laughs) 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 so so nightmare fuel bro right (laughs) Right, but you know, Do you not know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, that was uh, awkward for for a few minutes there, but uh, got it sorted out, and here we are. Hey, that's that's what it's all about, bro. You are great on your feet. Yeah, you're, you're she she used to feet. get it in. She used to get it in as a dancer. She worked a lot. She she would have done it much longer if she didn't hurt herself. That's so, what happened. Yeah. Mm. Lift, lifting weights she hurt her back and that pretty much put the you know kibosh to dancing so. damn okay yep. i didn't realize that getting in shape like she was gi jane in this mug lifting weights, <laughs> doing power cleans for more yeah. power yeah uh but she's yeah she's great she's great that's my wife love her shout out to kimmy yeah Man, that's beautiful. How was she? Um, you guys have been working on this for a minute. Is it a new idea? Was it always in the back of your minds? Like, yeah, we want to go on and do this. Uh, what being the being baby? The yeah. Um, yeah, we've been working on it for some time. Okay. Uh, so it, you know, yeah, we had a lot of a lot of shit that we went through, but. Uh, again, it, it makes you appreciate what you got. So here we are, a little girl on the way, healthy as can be. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah man. It was it was interesting because I think that she, when when we were still fresh, um, I wanted kids, and I don't think that 
she wanted kids necessarily or, or just even gave it that much thought. Um, She's a girl, Deedon. She's given it much thought, sure. <laughs> she she, she could have told you. And, you know, because she has that kind of personality sometimes where she's just like, man, I never think about it much. And then they'll just <laughs> keep going because you really want to get into it. Yeah. Um, well. she, she's, it's in her biology to think about it. But, well, <laughs> for now she's, you know, yeah, she's all in. She's well excited as could be. She's been excited. She can't wait to have a kid, daughter, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's going to be amazing, cool, man. man. And it's to cool. be able to grow up with the kid, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you don't want to be the washed dad. You, you, like, you know, the washed up dad that can't even, his athleticism was toast. He's got, well, that's that's most that's most of the parents out here, bro. You know, people don't start having kids until they're, you know, forties, fifties. Sometimes I think about that, that, man. I don't want to be that washed up. I am not, bro. I I I need to be able to foul the fuck out of my kid to show him the way. Like, this is how <laughs> life goes. Hack, right. right? You know what I'm saying? You have to respond to that. It's how you get up, son. Right. I need to knock that little nigga down, man, repeatedly. That way he yeah. learns he needs to get up way more times than he got knocked down. Oh, you see, yeah, you're right. And but you see some of the oldest parents out here. You, know, you just see like this. You think it's a grandfather sometimes. Yeah. Like, oh, that's my kid. Like, damn, really? I, you know, they get wrapped up in that hamster wheel life. You know, when they have to make sure every. Everything is accounted for and everything's perfect and nothing's ever perfect ever. And it's never the right time, Um, you know, but they try to get as much together as possible before they do it. And then Mm -hmm. by that time, it's like, boy, you know, Mm -hmm. you can't even stop this little rascal. Like there's nothing you can do to control this cat. You have no powers, no more, no skills, no strength. All you got is (laughs) in a wheelchair when he's just this this rambunctious like yeah. wide-eyed 18 year old ready to raise hell you can't do nothing bro walking straight over parents at 13 at 12 <laughs> no i need to be able to toss you like a bag of potatoes i need to right. be able to fling you over there like a hacky sack you know what i'm saying if need be you know what i'm saying i need to give you the old yeah. the bacon neck shirt collar if uh, right. need be you know what i'm saying i, I need <laughs> yeah. to ball you up bro you know yeah. what i'm saying i need to you know, this is the alpha male right here. Here's the pecking order right here. You're there near this rung right here. Be be a kid. <laughs> all right. This is a grown grown folks conversation. This right. is all shit I've heard. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Coming up, man. Yeah. Like, you know, you gotta be able to ball them up. That way they have yeah. that healthy fear of you. Right. That's called respect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Period. Like, yeah. My dad can house me and he houses me. right 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 yeah you're right man and uh but it it's also interesting that i if you would ask me so i'm 33 i guess allegedly i've I've, I've reached that yeah i've reached that point where it takes time yeah i don't care anymore about the number that i am i stopped a long time ago giving a shit i was like yeah i mean Per the earth, I'm 33. I've been around it 33, uh, 33 times, and I, f- I yeah. feel the same. I feel good. But if you would have told the 21-year-old Deedon, hey, when you're 33, you'll be married with a kid on the way, and then like, man, whatever. Your hair you down to your kneecaps. <laughs> right, right, right. You have no idea what you're talking about. But oh, man. No, it's funny the way life plays out, and you know, just – telling you the other day that I'm happy, happy as can be just, I'm, I'm confident in our future and uh, I'm just excited. I'm just taking it as it comes, you know, uh, you know, that's Wayne Chun, right? That's what my seafood literally says. Yeah. Yeah. We just take it as it comes. Like that's our martial art. That's Bam. Kung Fu. Life Beautiful. problems are Wayne Chun problems. Yeah. One and the same. How long have you been doing that by the way? Man, like a few years, three years. That's not what you started with. I mean, you know, I had hands, but it wasn't no martial art. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, I could put paws to face, but it, like it wasn't no <laughs> martial art, bro. Compared to what I understand now, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. 
Yeah. And no one does. Mm-hmm. You know, in that sense, some people are able to put Paul to face a lot more accurately than others and, and more often. And and they win fights. <laughs> they win yeah. skirmishes. And then other people, boy, most people, mm-hmm. man, like if I knew then what I knew now, hell, I, I wouldn't even. And this is the weird part just about. T- just turned into your father. What? Oh, shit. I know. <laughs> Bro, I be saying shit and I'm like, damn, that was dad. And what's funny, yeah. man, is we. So we, we have become friends, listeners, mm-hmm. me and my father. It just took my whole life like we were like we really could get out of that father son shit mm. um i've done all the things i've done he's like all right of his success there's no doubt okay so now like he's his own person he, he like he's doing his thing he ain't fucking up out here i'm proud of mm. him you know what i'm saying he shouts that from the top of a mountain um uh, we made amends or you know it was trying like we it was a whole lot of not getting along and me not understanding these concepts of him just I'm 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 here to keep you alive. I ain't trying to be your fucking friend. Someday, not now. You're not gonna you like you're not gonna you're not gonna always understand why I'm doing this, but just know that it is always out of love. Always mm-hmm. out of love. I love you more than life itself. And someday you will understand. These are the some days. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was talking about earlier, like my parents are everywhere I go and and like my family is because when moments pop up, it's just my dad leading the way, guiding me still. It's just like, damn, that was a dad move or that was a dad thing to say. So many yeah. quotes, infinite quotables. And it's like my parents. I don't know, man. Yeah. The older we I, get. It, it happens to me every time I'm out. I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm my father right now. Mm-hmm. That's what just happened. And Subconsciously I- just became my father. And I'm okay with that. And think about this. So there was a book that I read and I recommend it. I recommend Range and uh, The Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. He's one of my favorite thinkers. Bruce, Bruce Lipton. Lipton. Essentially. Nah, I, think I'm, I think I'm fucking him up with uh, James Lipton. Yeah. And the, totally, they, totally different men. Way different. <laughs> so Dr. Bruce Lipton, like essentially – what you choose to believe in can affect you on a cellular level, just on a biological level, because your DNA, uh, this is paraphrased, like your DNA is informed by your environment in a large part. It's waiting for instructions and stimuli. Well, that stimuli comes from what you take in. Mm-hmm. And uh, in that, you can affect your ability to heal yourself and do all kinds of interesting, wonderful things as a, uh, human organism and so the subconscious when a when a kid is born like a baby they're in a certain state they spend a lot of their time from like age you know from when they're a baby to like eight years old something like that five years old in the theta state that's the most creative state and that tends to be the state that we find our brain in when we're like taking a shit or in the shower that's why we come up with brilliant ideas on the throne or when you're taking a shower or in a hot mm-hmm. tub, something like that, because you're maximally relaxed. When you're that relaxed, your muscles are relaxed, your brain reverts to a theta state versus the alpha state or the beta. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, children, kids, when they're developing their brain, it's just a recorder. That's what your subconscious is. It's just recording. It's nothing they can do. They're just recording. Especially in that moment, in that phase of their lives, in that window. It's a finite, small window. That's what... Uh, that's what's important about young parents um, that I've been picking up is that um, the kids are literally human tape recorders. Mm-hmm. They're, they're recording behavior, thought patterns as they're forming their own neural pathways and grooves in their brain by which to determine how they can use their brain power to interact with their world and their environment. And there's and there's no uh, no other time that you learn like in that, that way, right? Like you you absorb more information at that time than any other point in your in life, your whole right? life. Yeah, way more. It's super learning. It's hyper learning, and that's why like kids, it's hard for me to learn hella languages right now. I can, but it's gonna take. I'm a, like I'm a sweat some. I'm a sweat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a kid, it's no sweat to pick up the martial arts easily because they don't have egos and shit to pick up anything instruments they can learn five different instruments 
They can learn multiple languages. They can do it all with relative ease and compartmentalize because they have plasticity. They haven't worn any grooves into their heads. Mm. A certain way of thinking. It's very malleable. It's not. It's, like, it's nothing concrete. But you want to instill these values, these norms, these kinds of beliefs and things like that and ways of moving in a kid while they're recording. Because once that happens, you can't really change the tape easily. Mm -hmm. You can add new information, but that tape, that's subconscious, that's the foundation upon which you do everything. Everything Mm -hmm. until the end. And it's just, now I think about that you know, this is the result of everything that we ever recorded as babies, as offspring, just little bitty guys, little bitty girls. Yeah, that's interesting. And I be telling my homie all the time, you know, who have like kids, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah." you know, just look out. You know, I'm not telling them how to parent, but I'm just reminding them that their kids are just recording. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my way of not trying to overstep and tell them how to do I'm like I ain't got no kids but I do know that they're just recording (laughs) and I don't want anyone to have to untangle these iPod damn earbuds here this it like it's just a tangled mess because they just were willy-nilly with the way that they communicated or do like exposed them to Mm -hmm. because you can't undo it you know that's just the permanent nature of that subconscious that's that's a lot to think about that's why I recommend that <laughs> book. Yeah, I, I, I was like, it's called it's called Biology of Belief. Biology of Belief. Yeah. Okay. And it's yeah. narrated by him too, so he has a okay. nice soothing voice and everything. Man, he's a powerful, powerful mind. Very fascinating. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, and I've been picking up so many books during quarantine and uh, just all types of shit. So yeah, I'll add those two to the list. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I guess that's why you. Well, naturally, you want to give your kids something to do and uh, something to stay busy or something to learn, but that is why you would do it at that time. Like, here, learn the drums and take Spanish. And because mm-hmm. by the time you're, you know, 25, 30, even, it's like to do those things, you can, but it's going to take a lot more work. A lot more work. And in that time, again, circling back to, to the other book and I'll send this to you range by David Epstein when your kid is doing a bunch of different shit in different domains different realms entirely and they're learning how to do all of it what they're learning how to do is learn mm-hmm. if you yeah. can master learning you could pick up any fucking thing and Sifu teaches me this too he's teaching me how to learn martial arts mm-hmm. So that if I had an interest in Muay Thai, I could pick that up no problem easily. If I wanted to dabble in boxing and add that to my martial art, which I do, it's no problem because I understand the concepts of movement and awareness and range, distance. You know what I'm saying? Countering mm-hmm. angles. I understand that already. I'm learning how to learn and how to train as well, how to train. And so back to range real quick. Um when your kid's learning all these different things, they're learning how to learn and then they're learning how to solve problems creatively. Some specialists, a person who only learned or went down a certain path, like a chess master who raised little, like little chess masters, they only know chess. Mm -hmm. It's only a certain number, like it's only a certain uh, possibility, like a certain number of patterns and a way that things go. Because people only think of certain ways to move about chess and do chess and play that game, right? Mm-hmm. Well, take those chess players out of that domain that they dominate and put them somewhere else. Yeah. It's not necessarily going to be the same result whatsoever. They might be no. garbage or whatever they're doing next. Right. Can't play chess here. Rules are different. Those rules are fixed. The outcome yeah. is more certain in your room that you dominate. But when that kid, when your kid's doing the violin, playing video games, you know, hand-eye, also doing martial arts. There are so many. So what happens? So this is the visual. You have someone who is a specialist. They have a deep knowledge. So they've worn this deep trench, this trench of information. 
they're digging, they're digging, they're digging to see how much of this they can understand. It's the same shit. But how mm-hmm. deeply can I understand it? That's good. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you'll come across a problem that you can't solve and it's in your domain. But the answer might not be. The mm-hmm. solution might not be in your domain, in that discipline. But if you were interdisciplinary, you might be able to draw from an experience that could have come from left field. Like, you know what? I was a firefighter for a little bit. And I was a chemistry major. Maybe I can solve this problem here. But Mm -hmm. if you're digging so deep and your trench is so high, this way, that way, you can't just peer over the top to see the answer on the other side. It could be right over here or right over here. Damn sure it in there sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's what's important about those... um, the infancy, you know, of a kid and making sure that they're recording some dope shit, recording some good habits and behaviors and curiosities, you know, instead of shutting the door on them all the time. Nope. Stay in the kid's place. Stay in the child's place. Do, 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 do. That too. Because that's discipline in general. They need that. But from there, you need some different kinds of bricks, different textures, shapes. Sure. You know. So range, I'm gonna send those books over to you. Range, range is an actor. Yeah, I and mean, nobody mm-hmm. likes anyone that's one note. You know. Oh man, and there's you so many. You gotta, you, you gotta dig in, dissect. I mean, there's so many different individuals in this world. I mean, there's a lot of work to put in. But to that point, yeah, you know, a lot of actors have zero to draw from. Like they, you know, they were just uh, given the resources. They were able to go to Uta Hagen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And learn from her specifically and directly or Alan Fine, whoever whoever it was going to be. Uh, they ain't gone through shit. Trust fund baby, maybe. Or parent was an actor, had loot, so they wanted to follow in their footsteps. But they haven't encountered anything, any kind of adversity for real. But they're here. But they, there comes a moment when they get exposed because they have this audition and they have this scene and this character lived a certain life and for the life of them they can't channel that Mm -hmm. nowhere in them in their spirit in their soul in their repository of experience in life can they draw upon the powers to make that seem like a slice of life because it was never a slice of theirs Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah but when you've been through it all like you've been through a shit ton i've been through a shit ton go through a lot it's easy Hey, in take that a, sense, take a, take a bus around town. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> leave leave there. leave the Palisades. Yeah, and go to Skid Row. Spend mm-hmm. a little time down there. Go to Mission. You know the Mission joint on uh, I want to say Sixth Street, in like San Pedro. Go yeah, there. Work at yeah, the soup I, kitchen. Yeah, I uh, volunteered uh, volunteered up there a couple times, which they. They, sh- whoever was running that left or something. Mm. I've tried to get in touch, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you see, uh, you see a lot. You see mm-hmm. a lot of uh, plight, for sure. And then when that character comes about, you're like, oh, I know about that. Mm-hmm. Some kind of way, you know what I'm saying? Or you have to play an insane person. Well, I know someone whose mother was is actually clinically insane, and we've had conversations for years, so I can, yeah. I can see how I, I I can make that happen, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Inject yeah. a few demons of your own in that, and then you got a a struggle <laughs> souffle. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, you sure do. Uh, yeah, man. Well, shoot. Uh, there's a you, you, there's a fight night tonight. You Yo, watching any of that or what? Is there a fight? Who? So who's fighting tonight, brother? I was. I I wasn't sure. I, I knew that Cormier and 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 Stipe were fighting next week. I didn't know who was fighting yeah. this week. Who's fighting? Main and, event. Is, and, uh, and 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 did you see Brunson? No. Did you see what he did to Ed Shabazian? Oh, I did. I did. Yeah. Oh yeah. my. Yeah. Was it that was that was last weekend, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fight Island and yeah. Oh my God. These quarantine almost, fights have been the greatest. Yeah. No, it's. It, it, I don't it want a crowd. Kind of, it is cool to hear him. I don't want a crowd everything. anymore. Yeah. yeah, I don't want a crowd. But yeah, he almost killed that man. He almost he? took his life. <laughs> yeah. 
it was yeah, that was not a that was not a, a quick stoppage there it should have been but, uh, <laughs> yo poor herb dean he's damned if he do and he, he's he's i know he's damned if he don't because you know fighters love refs that let them fight and uh, let them fight themselves out of a shitty situation that's mm-hmm. what being a warrior is about but the moment he doesn't or the moment he does that, and it just, they just decide. They just go, hey, they could have been stopped sooner. Of course they could have. Well, that, <laughs> that, that, one, that one in particular, I mean. Yeah, he shouldn't have came out this sh- next he showed, round. He showed no signs of life there. <laughs> so there, there, was no, there was no fighting your way out of that situation. But. No, and then I was hoping that they wouldn't let him come back into the ring, the octagon. Mm-hmm. And it went ding. And I was like, no ding, no ding. That shouldn't be a ding. <laughs> it should be one of these. It's over. Right, right. It was crazy. He walked back out there, and you could see it in his face. He he was wearing his dis, his non-desire to fight. He was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, man, call that. Uh, so to run it down, uh, let's see, main event is... Derek Lewis and Alexi Olenek. Oh, yeah. It's okay. Okay. Alexi Olenek's fought like 900 times, man. Yeah, his man. Brain, his, his brain's got to be mush, right? Hopefully and not. He's but. got that 900 times energy, too. He's like, they'll find whoever they put in front of me, bro. <laughs> whoever they put in front of me, I'll smish them. Smish them. Who, who do you got in that one? You know what, man? Derek's my boy. I like Derek. But man, I just watched Alexi Olenek tie somebody up into a balloon animal. <laughs> There's the difference. You see what I'm saying? Because old, because yeah. Alexi can knock you the fuck out. Well, Derek Lewis is just a bruiser. He's just that's, he's that's just a bruiser, and yeah. so Derek, in desperation, if he's struggling on the feet, he's going to try to get him out of there, and he's going to slip right up under there and get all of that. And take mm-hmm. him to the ground, and Derek is useless on the ground, man. He now he can his takedown defense. He can shake you off a little bit, but that's gonna wear his cardio out, man. And then then if he gets taken down with worn down cardio, he can't explode anymore, mm. and he's gonna get strangled. Mm-hmm. So I think that like Olenek, he's renowned for his ground game. He's just gonna strangle him. I don't want it to happen. I hope Derek catches him, but he's going to have to do that. It's, it's, like it's going yeah, to. I'm going. Uh, I'm going. Linux in that one. Yeah, I think that he's just going to do that. He has a more rounded right skill set. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. And he couldn't have learned that much and become that much more dope on the ground in that frame of time to mm-hmm. be able to do anything to somebody who's made a career in strangling dudes like Alexi. Mm-hmm. Plus, he has hands. So he's going to occupy your mind up top. He's going to get you defending up top. You're going to be like, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And then he's going to be like, who? Yeah. On the ground real quick. He's going to do an inside trip, get him on the the floor or a single leg, something like that. And it's just going to be a wrap. Or Uh, it'll be a long-ass, boring-ass fight of him getting just, just beat on. Yeah. On the ground. Chris Weidman is fighting too. I haven't seen him in a while. Well, it's been um, a minute, but he's been knocked out like six times in a row. He needs to actually. I know, man. He he started off. Uh, he was on. He was on a nice little streak there, and then once he lost, he's kept losing. It seems. Yeah, man. I don't know what to. He's fighting uh, Omari Akhmedov. 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 I don't know. Ag- I don't know who that is. Ag- Ag- oh, Akhmedov. No. It sounds Chechnyan or Dagestani and therefore deadly dangerous. <laughs> right. You, right, I'm sure he is. You uh, know what I'm saying? Yeah, Probably got no. a wrestling background. That's a different that's a different isn't that just a different world? It's a whole different world. Speak, speaking of, of uh time and, and pressure and you know, adversity. All exactly. That stuff. Like, At, that's a hard existence, period, as a human. Uh, right. And so for them to get paid to beat up people, that's luxury. Right. They're like, this is, bro, that dude from last week who beat up two dudes at Fight Island in one go, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Kimaev, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. The uh, the Chechen dude. Mm-hmm. He picked up that dude like he was a baby. Yeah, and beat him to death quickly. <laughs> After he beat another dude to death quickly on Fight Island, the same, like within ten days, he 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 destroyed two world class fighters. Two days. Yeah. He's from Chechnya. It's a hard place. They probably like they're actual like they're actual warriors. Like them cats from the uh, the uh, Caucasus mountain regions and shit. Like the mountain Russians. Crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, they're just totally different people. Zabit. Yeah. Uh, Nagama Sharapov. My gosh. Yeah, look at that. Strange looking individual, man. He looks like he's a, a, he he's an Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> if he he's Abraham Lincoln the ninja. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's weird is he what's weird about him is his cardio kind of sucks. Really? Watch him fight Kyle Bosniak. Okay. Which is a dope fight. Watch him fight watch him fight Bosniak. Bosniak's an animal, but Bosniak um he just doesn't have as much firepower, but Zabit be using a bunch of ninja shit and that's taxing explosive shit he can barely get through three what is he what is he going to do when he's got to go five if he ever gets a he will get a title shot but man he he, like he doesn't seem to condition himself for three rounds he's just so superior offensively and and like defensively to a lot of cats but in that third round it's always a level playing field he'd be struggling sometimes Like if he doesn't get him out of there, or like submit him, or just beat him to death, Bosnia was just pinning him down, just going wham, wham, wham. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then finally the horn blew, and it was clear who won. But Bosnia shouldn't have stood a chance. I'll check it out. Yeah, I've only I've only, I've only seen one of Zabit's fights. Uh, I think it ended pretty quickly. Zabit probably within the last six months or so. His fight IQ is insane. It's just it's just an interesting thing because I've seen it more than once where his cardio, he's a slender, skinny guy, but he does nothing but cartwheel kicks and <laughs> shit like that. Big move. Yeah. What Daniel Cormier, what DC would call big actions. He loves that fancy jumping off the wall like Vega from Street Fighter type shit. <laughs> you, know, you, you, like, you know the wall jump? Yeah. Yeah, like Vega from Street Fighter. Like That's the shit... You know, that he likes to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like he doesn't just poke at you, poke at you, poke at you. Because uh, who was it? Michael Bisping, he um, had an interesting point. I think it was him. Um, if you hit somebody with 30 to 40% of your power, eventually they feel all of that all of the time. It doesn't hurt. It, like it doesn't hurt in the beginning. But by round four or round two, round three, everything hurts. Mm-hmm. Because now it's the cumulative effect of damage. Now all of those shots hurt. Yeah, I can't imagine the next day. Oh man, uh, for these fighters, man, golly, you just gotta, you just gotta lay out. That's it. Like there's gotta be no movement. You know the worst kind of moment, <laughs> man, um, when Grover Teixeira beat to smithereens uh, Anthony Smith. Mm. Have you seen that fight? Mm-mm. No. Watch that fight. It was one of the most, you know, we're, and we're conditioned to watch these, you know, watch this blood sport and it not be a big deal. But that was hard to watch Anthony take that kind of beating because there was nothing he could possibly do. Yeah. No matter how talented Anthony Smith is. Grover, Anthony Smith, he's, he's, he's the one that... Uh... Didn't he fight Bones Jones? He fought Bones. Yeah, and got picked apart in that one. But he's mm-hmm. he's he's had a ton of fights, hasn't he? He's so many fights, man. He's had a lot of fights. He's a smart dude. He's a really nice guy. Humble humble cat. Um, had some good moments against Bones, but it was clearly decisive who won. You know what I'm saying? But when he fought Grover, it was way worse. He stood a chance against Jones somehow, <laughs> but Grover was literally beating him up in the corner of the octagon and, and and you can hear him. He was like, 
I'm so sorry, brother. It's, it's just <laughs> just doing my job. And then Ant is like this. Hey, man, I get it, bro. It's all good. I'm not lying to you. That's I don't want no crowds no more. I don't need to yeah. see those motherfucks from wherever like wherever in the world they are. Shout out to them for their patronage. I like I love y'all. I don't need uh-huh. them there drowning out the sounds of a fight of warfare. So so this was recent then. Fairly this recent. Was recent. This is oh, okay. quarantine days, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. If I can find yeah, that, I'm gonna send that to you. Hell yeah. That okay. fight was something, man. Okay. So who else is fighting uh, tonight? Is that about it? Everything else is small dudes. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the, those are the those are the names. Okay. So otherwise, like, because it's. I mean, I don't know. I, I know enough. I, I mean, I watch the UFC. I know enough to be conversational, but mm-hmm. I don't know these fighters in depth. There's a there's a Maki Patolo. Okay. And Darren Darren Stewart. Okay. And then uh, a couple women fighting. I'm not even going to take a shot at their name. Looks like a couple Russians or probably Dagestani, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to approach that. Um, and then a Benil Darush and Scott Holtzman. Benil Darush is fighting again? Yeah. I'm going for him in that. Yep, yeah. He's a and monster. If, of course, they got their full day of prelims on. I mean, the shit's probably been on since... Like three, two, yeah, yeah two Went o'clock. For a while. Okay, uh, yeah, man. Shoot, should we call it? Let's call it, baby boy. Hey, it was right. such a pleasure, man. Yeah, like an honor and a pleasure to have you on this motherfucker. You guys will be hearing more from this man, Deedon Donovan. Where can they find you, bro? If at all. I mean. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Hey, that's cut, why I named cut. that shit what I named it. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you see how it just, f- just flows, yeah. bro? I mean. That's it. Cut I'm, it. Hey, I feel uh, you. No, I, I mean, I, I'm on social media, but not really on social media. You can just Deed and Donovan if, if, if you want to take the time to look. But it's been a pleasure, man. And uh, I'll, I'll be happy to come back on at some point should you extend the invitation. My brother, this invitation is open. It's yeah. open. You know how we do. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So send Kimmy and the fam my love, man. Will do. All right. Salud. Salud. Ladies and gentlemen, if y'all need to reach out to me for any reason at all, Get on and uh, let's see. Open up your email and send something to me at uh, I mean pod at gmail.com. I am Monkey D Travanti on Instagram. Holla at me there. Peace. One love. Y'all stay safe. Be careful. Don't do nothing I wouldn't do. <laughs>